as Mike Summers know it, the American Petroleum Institute president and CEO. Mike, good to have you back. I did want to pick your uh, brain a little bit on what the president might do later this week, and that is, uh, Shell, we don't know for how long or even if it's going to happen, but, but the 18 and a half federal, uh, 18 and a half cent federal gas tax. Um, what do you think of that? Well, what's interesting about this uh, current proposal, Neil, is that for the first year of this administration, they were really focused on demand destruction. And a proposal like this of cutting the federal gas tax would actually be an exercise in demand construction. Uh, so I do think we're, the real focus here should not be on uh, short-term solutions like cutting the federal gas tax, but on long-term solutions to provide American energy security from American producers here in the United States. The American Petroleum Institute just put out a plan to do just that last week called the 10 for 22 plan that you can find at API.org that would actually provide long-term price relief for American consumers while providing for American energy security here at home. All right. So when the president says your industry has to just, uh, you know, uh, produce more and do more and take advantage of contracts that have yet to be uh, tapped, you say... Well, I'd say exactly what the farmer said uh, in the lead up to this segment. For most uh, of the, this industry, we are price takers. We are not price makers in, in oil markets. What this means is, is that we need to produce more in the United States to cut prices throughout the rest of the world. We have a plan to do that with our 10 and 22 plan. Uh, and at the same time, this administration needs to be focused on what we know is going to be true for decades and decades to come, that the world is going to continue to demand oil and gas. And it's better to get that oil and gas here in the United States than it is to get it from regimes that are hostile to American interests like Russia. And Saudi Arabia, we might point out. But uh, let me ask you a little bit, Mike, and I always tell people this, and they can't either grasp it or they don't want to think about it, that oil trades like a commodity on, on the, the world markets. Um, and it trades on expectation of, of future supply and demand and all that, much as a stock when a company comes out with an earnings report, and it might be in the, in, in the near term, uh, if it telegraphs problems in the longer term, the stock takes a beating. One of the things I've noticed with oil, as soon as this president took office and shelved Keystone, now you might argue there was nothing coming from Keystone yet, it had a ways to go. The markets uh, it interpreted that, uh, that this was not going to be a fossil fuel friendly administration and bid up prices for the available supply that we had, thinking that supply would be curtailed in the future. That happened on day one of the administration. Now, I'm not pointing political fingers here, but that's the reality of a market based system. We have it for stocks. We certainly have it for oil. So let me flip that around to you. If the administration were to say, have at it, guys, drill, baby, drill, uh, you know, maybe even revisit Keystone, the world markets responding to that would do what? Well, what I would say is that this industry has been underinvested in over the course of the last five years. Some of that is because of the pandemic. But even before that, when the world was focused, instead on, of, of being focused on energy security, they were focused on the so-called energy transition. And this industry has been underinvested in because of this new movement toward more ESG investment and a, a real focus on climate change. But the consequences of that are, are showing themselves right now. We need more investment in this industry. In fact, we're hundreds of, of billions of dollars down in terms of what we should be investing for future growth and future demand for oil and gas. When you're in a position where even Saudi Arabia only has about 2 percent uh, of spare capacity within uh, their system, that means underinvestment is occurring. And we need to have more investment, not just in oil and gas development, but in more refineries in this country as well. Secretary Granholm is meeting with uh, the CEOs of major refining companies uh, later this week. And what they're going to tell her is, is that when you have a government that continues to talk down an industry like this, you're not going to get the investment that you need in future production. That's what has to happen at this meeting. They, she needs to say that we're focused on making sure that this industry is viable for decades to come, not focused on demand destruction from oil and gas. Or right, watch it closely, because if I have to remind people, Mike, if you just want to look at you and your oil buddies as interested in making money, if you want to put it that crassly, you make a lot more of it if you can produce a lot more of it in this supply and demand environment. 
hand over fist, in fact. Um, that, that's just a market reality. Uh, Mike, thank you very much. Good seeing you again. Mike was Great alluding to, to yeah. this uh, Saudi Arabia situation that we have right now and the fact the president will be going there next month. Many people argue hat in hand, uh, urge them to up their production, even though he's not doing really